Committee, we are now in session, ready to hear testimony on Senate File 207. Uh, Senator Putnam is here, um, and uh, members, it is my understanding that there is work left to do on this bill, so the plan uh, for this committee hearing is to hear testimony on the bill because we have a number of guests here today um, to give us some background and to, to testify to the need for this bill. Um, so we want to, to hear from them. Um, but then the plan will be to begin some discussion and then lay the bill on the table while Senator Putnam continues to work on it with the various stakeholders. Um, and our testifiers also have to make their way over to the House to offer testimony on the bill as well. Um, so I'm going to ask members to please hold your comments and questions until we've, we've heard from the testifiers. And then there is also an author's amendment. We have sent out the author's amendment over email to the members and we are just waiting on a paper copy, so we will also um, move that amendment after those paper copies have been um, handed out to the members. So we'll go ahead and begin with the presentation of the bill, and uh, our testifiers, Senator Putnam, I'll hand it over to you. Welcome to the Labor Committee. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members, and Ranking Member Dornick. Um, I appreciate this opportunity to talk about this issue with you all today. Uh, and knowing that you will be attending carefully and listening uh, with an open heart and an open mind to some stories that hopefully will educate you about the need for this bill that we have before us. Now, uh, as Chair McEwen mentioned, we're aware that this bill is in process. That's one of the most important things about the work that we do, is we're never always done, we're never always ever at perfect, but we're always trying to get better. And this bill is in that process right now. And one of the variables that Senator McEwen mentioned is that we are working with a rather large amendment that has been posted but you don't have in front of you right now. So we'll discuss that after our testimony uh, today. Uh, but just I want to be perfectly clear and upfront with you guys. Uh, we're working on this to make it the best we can because it's important. Uh, and that means we're going to take our time to do it right. Now, why is this important, you might be thinking? Members, not that long ago, a good friend of mine told me a story. Works in a, in a plant up near my district. Not in my district, but near. Told me a story about having to wear an adult diaper while he worked on the line to do his job. That may not be an issue of safety in your minds, but it is absolutely an issue of human dignity. And that is our job. To make sure the people who are working in these dangerous conditions, in these conditions that none of us have probably ever been in, feel heard, understood, and given the help that they need. Members, the bill you have before us today is not brand new. We've already got a flashlight that helps us look at some of the problems in labor. This is just a bigger flashlight, and it's pointing on the spot that has the greatest darkness. And in our state, in our day right now, that's meatpacking plants. Uh, these folks deserve our attention and our care. And so I appreciate your attention and your care on this issue today. Now, what the bill actually does, uh, you'll see some changes that are in the amendment that you're, you're, you will see uh, eventually that we will discuss after our testifiers have spoken. But at its core, what this bill does is it uh, requires the Department of Labor and Industry to appoint a meatpacking industry rights coordinator who is empowered to investigate and will report on conditions at meatpacking plants. It creates whistleblower protections that we all know, I think, in our hearts are both necessary and morally appropriate. It creates a workplace safety committee composed of people who know about workplace safety and injuries common in this type of work and employees who've been trained to understand that workplace safety. It creates, in so doing, it creates more responsibility among members of a certain workplace for the safety and quality of that workplace. It also includes a section on pandemic protections, which we hope will never matter. That's what the bill does at its core. You will see when you see the amendment, there are some other changes that we made that we can discuss afterwards. But right now, what's most important is that we listen to the people who are living lives in these places and doing the work that we don't do, but we benefit from. And so now, Madam Chair, I'd like to turn it over to our testifiers, if I may, please. Yes, Senator Putnam. Um, I have a list. Would you like me to call the first testifier, or do you have? would you like to call them? Uh, if you would, please, Madam Chair. Uh, Yes, Senator. Uh, first on our list, we have Tamara Nelson.
Welcome, Ms. Nelson, um, and I believe um, we had switched the order so that you could go first, so you could um, go um, to the other committee. Welcome to the Labor Committee. If you'd please introduce yourself, let us know your title, and then we look forward to your testimony. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Tamara Nelson with an EN. I am the Executive Director of Minnesota Agri-Growth Council. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership organization that represents the entire agri-food chain. We have individual farmers, processors, co-ops, and food manufacturers as members. And our members play a critical role in supplying the entire food chain while also being attentive to the needs of their workers. I do want to say I am not currently a worker in a packing plant. I have worked in a vegetable packing plant. I have family members who worked in uh, poultry packing plants. And I am apologizing in advance for missing their comments, but I look forward to hearing them in the house. Agrigrowth serves as a convener and a trusted information source for our members and for others. And our industry-wide perspective we think is really important because in Minnesota, the agri-food and forestry sector is our second largest economic driver. We feel that our members, whether farmers, cooperatives, processors, or manufacturers, work diligently to provide a safe working environment for employees. That is not always what occurs, and that's why it's good to have the input of our members, and it's good to work with this committee and also with the other sponsors of the bill and authors. In annual membership surveys and meetings that we have every year with our members, they consistently list the safety and health of their workers in the top five priorities that they have, and this has been for multiple years. We support opportunities to improve the health and well-being of agri-food workers, and while we have no objections to certain elements of the bill that work reasonably and effectively to do that, we do have a few concerns, particularly with areas that might be considered too broad or duplicative. For example, Pet food, canned meat, poultry production, and rendering are highly automated. It typically involves less than a dozen workers in very large open buildings. And so we would just encourage some further definition of what defines the workers most at risk. Our industry also adheres to multiple state and federal worker safety regulations, including the Minnesota Department of Labor, or DALI. And we feel that all Minnesota manufacturing and processing workers should be addressed through Dolly. We're not sure that creating a position that focuses exclusively on meat and poultry processors is necessary, but we're willing to discuss it. In addition, paid time off for all workers is a real priority this session. And so we look forward to seeing where that comes out. We don't see any data or rationale to support that meat and poultry processing workers would need any additional uh, protection or benefit over other industries and other manufacturers. So we would just urge that definition as well. And then I know I've heard several times that there is a size um, minimum on this bill. I have not found it, but we would just encourage uh, the committee to consider that the Department of Agriculture in Minnesota and many others have been encouraging additional uh, meat processing facilities around our state and providing funding and, and a support to that. We just encourage that that issue of size be addressed. And we feel, again, thankful for the opportunities to work with Senator Putnam and others on this bill. And we feel that we can, as an industry, continue to innovate and respond to the needs, whether pandemic year or not. And we look forward to working with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Madam Chair and committee members, I thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Next on our list, we have Ms. Claudia Ambriz. Ambriz? Welcome, Ms. Ambriz. If you'd please introduce yourself to the committee for the record, and we look forward to your testimony. Good afternoon. My name is Claudia Ambriz. And I've been living in Austin, Minnesota for the past 17 years. That's how long I've been working at Quality Pork Processor. I'm a member of uh, UFCW Local 663 and a Union Safety Committee member for many years. We have the right to work in a safe environment, and this legis legislation creates industry standards within the meatpacking industry that are long overdue. Over the years that I've worked, I've seen accidents, some were small like cuts and muscle pain. Others are bad accidents, like hawks falling down and hitting employees. 
or we had a member that was working on a rework skinner. The skinner was too close to him. He ended up skinning part of his chest and belly. Every time something like this happens, we as a safety committee, we go to the floor, complete an investigation, and look for ideas to prevent that from happening again. We have safety meetings twice a month that we do, and we do safety walks around the plant, and we talk to people to see if they have any concerns, but sometimes people are afraid to talk to. On Wednesday, we have new hire orientations. We hear all kinds of stories from other places where people have worked and they saw that they get hurt and they get fired because of going to medical treatment. Employers don't understand that workers need quality training and instead of providing that training, they let go of workers because they see labor as disposable. There are more people that take safety very seriously, yet there's a lot of companies that don't care. Here at Quality Pork, after people are going through their hiring process, they go two more weeks for training and muscle, muscle stretching. They do exercises, and we get to explain to them if they get hurt to go to medical, but sometimes for doing that, they can get fired. During COVID-19 pandemic, we had a lot of employees that quit and many jobs had to be shut down. Employees get, were moved to other jobs to keep the line running, but employers don't understand that you get hurt because you don't know the other kind of jobs that they put you in. So yes, the line, might, the line speed might be lowered down, but yes, we'll still work in to keep food on the table for people. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Ambries. Um, next on our list, we have Mr. Dan Lenway. And after that, Mr. Matt, Karn, Matt Karnin, Karnins. And uh, both people can come up um, to the um, testifier table, so we're ready. And um, we'll start with Mr. Lenway. Welcome to the Senate Labor Committee. If you would introduce yourself for the record, and then we look forward to your testimony. Members, first of all, thank you for taking the time to listen to our stories, issues, and concerns. Uh, my name is Dan Lenway. I've been employed at Hormel Foods for over 27 years in Austin, Minnesota. Uh, for the past six years, I've been the chief walking steward for the UFCW down there. Uh, during my time at Hormel Foods, I see injuries, unfortunately, that have become the norm. In the meatpacking industry, some of these include carpal tunnel, arthritis, tendonitis, lacerations, torn rotator cuffs, hearing loss, anxiety, physical and mental fatigue, and of course we all know COVID. Uh, and we have other injuries that can have life-altering implications, chemical burns, forklift accidents, uh, broken bones, and several more. Uh, myself, I have personally seen a pallet fall on a woman after the pallet stand, the counterweight was not working properly, and that was recorded. It fell off the stand, crushed both of her legs and ankles. She's now permanently disabled, not using a cane at all times. Another gentleman I was working with, after he recorded a belly press not being working properly, the safety features were broke. Unfortunately, he was able to put his hand in the press. The press crushed his hand with 1,800 pounds of pressure caught both of his fingers and his thumb. Unfortunately, he was stuck in that press for over a half hour before they could get him out of there. In writhing pain. I, I wouldn't have sat, I'll never forget that. Um, and these, many of these injuries could have been avoided and can be avoided. Companies continue to run the lines way too fast. People don't get the proper training. Your supervisors have poor management skills. They continue to run lines at long hours while totally understaffed. Corporate greed does not allow their management to maintain a machine properly for our members to work safely. This needs to be a time when health and safety isn't just a topic of discussion. It needs to be something practiced and enforced each and every day in our workplaces. Thank you. I appreciate your time, and once again, thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Lenway. Mr. Karnas, if you would introduce yourself for the record and... Um, and next, also, um, who could come up to the table, we have Ms. Uh, Jalisha Lopez. If Ms. Lopez, you could join us at the table, so we're ready. Okay, um, thank you. My name is Matt Carnes. I've lived in Austin. Can you hear me better now? My name is Matt Carnes. I've lived in Austin, Minnesota my entire life. Um, 
I've worked at Quality Park Processors now for 18 years. I've been the walking steward on day shift now since 2015. In my time there, I mean, you see the increased line speeds and everything else. I mean, I started off in 2005 there, and we were only running like 1,100 hogs an hour, you know, like 1050. Now we're up to 1325, you know. Even during the COVID pandemic, they didn't really truly slow down all that much. I mean, they did it to a little bit, but you're going from like 1325 down to like 1220. But now the employees are now having to work nine hour days besides eight hour days. So now you're talking way more repetitive motion injuries, everything else that leads to that. Like Claudia addressed, employees being pulled off their jobs. Um, I've done this job, but I don't know how to do this job, but you know what, I'm gonna stick you there. So now you're basically, you don't have like the break in time like a new employee would have even. Because a new employee has break in time on that job. You never got that. They just stick you over there and expect you to do it. Because you know how to run this job and do this job. Well, it's similar, so we're just gonna stick you there with no thought of it, you know, no thought of the safety of the employee. There's no real training. They'll, they'll run you through a piece of paper. Well, this is what you're supposed to do to stay safe. Sign it, here you go, bye. Um, barely, you know, the language is a big barrier. You know, I mean, they say they use interpreters, but you see it all the time where it's not really happening. I mean, just the other day I was up in the, in the cafeteria. They come up, do their safety meeting. Well, they do it in English, Spanish. Well, the Crin and the Crin people, they had an interpreter there, but she never said anything that they said. So they're not even getting the safety top topics. You get what I'm trying to say? They're only addressing English and Spanish and skipping everybody else. And that's a major concern of mine inside that facility. But that's all I really have. Thank you guys, have a nice day. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Um, and then we have Ms. Uh, Lopez, and after that, we will have Ms. Um, Pimpa uh, Keomane. If you could come up so we're ready. Thank you. And um, uh, Ms. Lopez, welcome to the committee. If you could introduce yourself for the record, and we look forward to hearing your testimony. Hi there, my name is Jalisha Lopez. Um, I live in Worthington, Minnesota. I basically grew up there and sometimes would travel back and forth from Texas with my family. I am a Uf Uf UFCW Local 663 member and I work at JBS in Worthington. Before that, I worked at High Life in Wyndham, Minnesota. I work on the packing line, making sure ribs are packaged so Minnesota families have food to eat. I have not been working in the plant very long, but I can tell you in my short time, there are lots of health and safety issues especially with repetitive motion injuries. There was a fellow union member, a woman in her 30s that became my friend. She had worked in the plant for years and had to have surgery on her wrist from repetitive motion injuries. After all this, she continued working in the plant and continued to have health issues with her wrist as well as constant headaches and nosebleeds. She had to quit because the work just became too much. Please support the Safe Workplace for Meat and Poultry Processing Workers Act today so we can try and address these injuries. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, next, we will have um, Ms. Keo Mane, and after that, Ms. Briane um, Bakele. Do we have Ms. Bakele? Great. Thank you. If you could just make your way up to the to the table, and then Ms. Keomane, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you could introduce yourself for the record, uh, and we look forward to hearing your testimony. Hello, my name is Pimpa Keomane. I work at JBS in Worthington, Minnesota. I'm asking you to support the Safe Workplace for Meat and Poultry Processing Workers Act. I'm grateful to be a union member. I've seen firsthand the difference that a union can make. Because can I just pause you real quick? Could you please move the, oh. um, it's hard to tell when you're speaking into it, but it makes so much of a difference. If you can move the microphone close, as close to your mouth as you can, that will help us to be able to hear you really well and make sure that your testimony is heard on the record. So I just want to make sure that everybody is really heard really well. So thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You can start over if you'd like. 
I'm grateful to be a union member. I've seen firsthand the difference that a union can make because I have many family members that also work at JBS in Worthington, where my family members, where we are members of UCW Local 663. At the same time, I have four cousins that work at J a different JBS plant that's just an hour away in Pipestone. For example, a couple years ago, the electricity went out and we got paid for four hours then got sent home when they couldn't fix it. My cousins in Pipestone got sent home with no pay when their electricity went out at the non-union JBS plant. But even with the protections we have through our our union contract, we are still working in a very dangerous job. In the 11 years that I've been working in the meat packing plant, I have injuries to my back and to the nerves that run from my neck all the way down my arms. The doctors also said that I have a pinched nerve on my lower back, which runs all the way down my legs, so basically I can't hold the weight. And they said when I get older, I might even be able not to walk. My dad has been at JBS for almost 30 years. He even, even though he's only 60 years old, he needs to retire early because he knows his body can't take it anymore. Please support our bill and workers like me and my family. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next up we have uh, Ms. Bekele, Bekele, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. <laughs> And um, if you could please make sure also to lean into the microphone very close so that we can hear you, your testimony clearly and um, introduce yourself for the record. And then um, we look forward to hearing your testimony. My name is Brana Bukele and I work at Hormel Food. Before that, I work at QP Quality Pork. Sorry. And I've been at US, UFCW for about 23 years. And I work a lot of, with a lot of people and everything, but I had my injuries. I pulled my muscle on my shoulder back a while back and it hurts, but I didn't complain about it. And I deal with that and then recently come back and it's, I've been going to chiropractic every two weeks to try to heal on that one. And the worst part is what hurts me the most is when I had carpentine on my hand. I couldn't hold my anything. I can sleep at night. I go down to medical, all this says, well, we'll send you to the doctor. And I went to the doctor, my first doctor allowed me to have a surgery, they did all the tests. The rest of the doctor I went to, they says, you don't qualify for it. I dropped my cup, coffee cup a couple times, then I just had a baby, and then I told them, I says, I can't even hold a coffee cup, what do you want me to do with my baby? You don't really want me to drop my baby. And they got to the point, it's kind of back and forth, back and forth, and I was like, I almost give up, but thanks to USCW, they helped me. And then I stood up for it, and they finally did the surgery. What's helped me is now my hands is better than ever. It bugs me once in a great while, but I can deal with that. And for you guys, we need your help. We just like, we want to help. It has, we as a people, we work together to help each other out with what we can, but the company has to work with us too, and you guys has to work with us as a human being. We help each other to keep our jobs safe for everybody in a safe place, and the company has to work with us as they used to back in the day. They listen, they understand, they know the pain, but kind of getting less and less than what it should be. And it hurts all the employees, and a lot of time they don't keep people because that point. That's why we're here to get support from you guys. And thank you for listening. Thank you for your testimony. And next, I believe, and I'm sorry, I forgot to call um, your name next, is Mr. Dan Barnes. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Welcome to the committee, to the Senate Labor Committee, Mr. Barnes. After Mr. Barnes, we will have Ms. Martell. If Ms. Martell wants to also come up to the testifier table, that would be great. And then, um, again, welcome, Mr. Barnes. If you'd introduce yourself for the record, we look forward sure. to hearing your testimony. Thank you. Easy name to say, right? <laughs> um, my name is Dan Barnes, yes. Um, and I've lived in the Austin area, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa my whole life. Um, I have three adult children now living in Iowa. 
please don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been a, a steward for Quality Pork uh, local and Local 663 for the past about six years. And working at the plant has been difficult on mine and everyone else's body over the years. I've had trigger finger. If you're not sure what that is, it's pretty easy to find. It's pretty much a locking finger where you're opening your, them up yourself manually and you get up in the morning. It's kind of rough. Um, but I think the biggest thing I would like to hit on is a steward at Quality Pork. I'm sent, well, not sent, go in the office to actually check the, uh, the line speed. And Matt's right. That's legitimate. We're running usually 1,328 to 1,330 hogs per hour. Now, just to give you a little perspective on exactly what that means, there are now sway bars up where those hogs come in because otherwise at that speed they would be swinging out so much you'd lose them on the floor. So that just tells you what kind of line speed we're actually running this thing at. And I'd just like to, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks. Yep. Thank you for your testimony. And um, next up we have Ms. Martell, and after that we will have Ms. Rena Wong. If Ms. Wong wanted to come to the testifier table, that would be great. Welcome, Ms. Martell. Uh, if yep. you'd introduce yourself, we look forward to your testimony. Sure. Uh, you can hear me all right? I'm Callie Martell, and I've been living in Austin pretty much all my life. Um, I started at QPP when I was 20, so that was back in 1991. So anyway, um, I've had two daughters. Um, they're 29 and 22, and um, I really love my job. I really do. Um, the meat packing plant is just a wonderful place to work at. Um, but there are some safety issues that I do have, um, right along with you know the line speed and stuff. But it seems like on certain jobs, they have um, oh, like um, more product that we have to put out in certain jobs. And I feel like there's no stopping point. Um, I, I worked on the line for a while, um, the loin line. And um, it seems like on my job, they want more and more product of a certain product. And my job is very physical, where I got to throw the loins out. And it's very twisting. And I just feel like it's all about the money sometimes and not about the ergonomics that in my job. So there's things that I want, you know, for the company to look at. Um, I'm also part of the safety committee and the ergonomics committee. So I, what we do is we walk around and make sure that um, there's no safety issues, um, like um, people making sure they wear their QP or their um, safety gear. And um, if we catch someone that isn't safe or doing what they're supposed to safely, um, then we report that to the supervisors. And sometimes it, I feel like the supervisors really aren't on board all the time with it. Um, so that's an issue. Um, but anyway, you know, it's just, it's a, there's so many like, I don't know, safety hazards around. And I just feel like we need to keep on board with our safe, safety act and stuff. Um, and I would like to see more people on the safety committee. It seems like people have lost interest being on the safety committee. So we're kinda, I feel like we're just on our own with that. So, um, I just really hope that this act really supports us and don't give up on us, please, because we want to be safe. We want to come home to our families. So thank you. Thank you for your testimony. And next we have uh, Ms. Wong. And after that, we will have Mr. Mohammed Goni. If Mr. Goni could come up just so we're ready. 
And um, I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Wong, if you would introduce yourself for the record, and we look forward to hearing your testimony. Good afternoon, Chair and members. My name is Rena Wong, and I am the president of the United Food and Commercial Workers, Local 663. I represent 17,000 hardworking union retail, meatpacking, processing, food preparation, manufacturing, healthcare, and other workers in Minnesota. I'm here to stand with the thousands of essential workers in the meatpacking and poultry workers industry throughout Minnesota and ask you to pass the Minnesota Safe Workplaces for Meat and Poultry Processing Workers Act, Senate File 207 which provides comprehensive workplace health and safety worker protections and improves the security of our food supply. Meatpacking is one of the most dangerous industries. Health and safety is continuously brought up as one of the most important issues. The global COVID-19 pandemic that began in 2020 only pulled back the curtain on this industry. The pandemic led to an extremely dangerous work environment and subsequent COVID outbreaks at meatpacking plants throughout the country. I am sure you heard about the outbreaks in Minnesota about COVID. JBS in Worthington, Pilgrim's Pride in Cold Spring, Hormel in Austin, and many others where thousands of essential workers are employed. Together with the state of Minnesota, we worked closely with OSHA and we did what we could to help workers. We are thankful for that partnership. We also realize that we have to do more. That is why we need to pass this legislation this year. This legislation is long overdue. It helps with accountability within the industry, prevents airborne disease outbreaks by supplying PPE, provides training and focuses on equity-centered solutions that protect workers. You have heard true stories today from meatpacking workers from Worthington, Austin, and also St. Cloud. It takes a lot of courage to tell your story and stand up and dare to move for change. And meatpacking workers are doing just that. They dove, drove two to three hours from greater Minnesota to be here today in person to make a difference because they know they deserve a fair shake at a better life. We're asking for a fair and level playing field for the safety of meatpacking workers and the security of our food supply in Minnesota. House File 207 provides consistency and accountability that is sorely needed in this dangerous industry. We must do better to protect essential workers that keep Minnesotans fed. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next, we have Mr. Goni, and then um, after Mr. Goni, we will have Ms. Gutierrez, Maria Elena Gutierrez, after. Great. Um, welcome to the Senate Labor Committee, Mr. Mohamed Goni. Uh, if you could introduce yourself for the record, and we look forward to your testimony. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Mohamed Goni, and I'm an organizer with Greater Minnesota Waka Center. It's a nonprofit based in uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. Um, in the past few years, I've been working with uh, low-wage workers and um, especially those, who are, those that work at the meat packing plants. Um, the stories you hear, uh, you know, um, true and also, but only very few. There are a lot of, a lot of workers who cannot, you know, speak up uh, for themselves. And, um, you know, they have fewer protection and they cannot even come here and, you know, speak about the challenge and issues they have with their employers. Um, during the pandemic, um, a lot of meat packing plants, uh, workers have been exposed to, you know, uh, um, a lot of, uh, you know, risks and some of them got the viruses by not having enough protection from their employers. So I'm here to ask for your support and, and you know, help for those uh, workers who cannot you know, speak for themselves or who cannot come here or you know, who have a lot of challenges uh, in, in their workplaces. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. And welcome to the Senate Labor Committee, Ms. Gutierrez, if you would introduce yourself, and we look forward to your testimony. 
Uh, my name is Mylena Gutierrez. I, I, I live and um, I organize in central Minnesota. Our office is in St. Joseph's Church in Way Park. So, uh, Chair, Chair Ms. McEwen and committee members, thank you for giving us the opportunity to testify in favor of HF 207, the safe workplaces for meat and poultry processing work act. Hello, my name is Malena Gutierrez. I am the Central Minnesota Coalition Director from Unidos Minnesota. I lead Faith Justicia Minnesota. We are a faith-based Latino, Latinos striving to bring justice and provide kindness and compassion to our community throughout Central Minnesota. There are many immigrant workers who work hard in the meat and poultry packing and processing plants every day to feed Minnesota, to feed you, me, and all of us. Even before the corona, coronavirus pandemic, I heard stories from workers who were hurt on the job. They are making the same motion over and over to process animals. So it is very easy to, to get hurt. For a lot of the workers, English is not their first language. Sometimes they do not have enough training. Sometimes they do not understand the training because of the language. And sometimes they do not know who or where to go if they have been hurt. At the height, pandem at, at the height of the pandemic, the stories happen even worse. I heard from many workers in Pilgrim's Pride, there were many cases of COVID and the company hide that information from the workers. A female worker was told by the Pilgrim's nurse station that she felt symptoms because of her menopause, but she tested positive. Even when workers still had symptoms, they were told to go back to work. I heard from a worker that he got COVID at work and brought at home to his wife who was pregnant and she delivered the baby before the nine months. And it was an emergency, the, the baby was delivering on the ambulance. All of them insure food made into the table while they stay navigated at crisis. Many people work in the plants and live in the larger, larger St. Cloud area. So when there is an outbreak in the plant, there is an outbreak in the community. When workers get hurt at the plant, the impact they impact the community because they live here, shop here, have kids in the school here. This is why it's so important to make sure meat and poultry workers are healthy and safe. We are all connected. I ask you to help workers and help our community. Thank you for the time. God bless you and keep you safe and healthy. Thank you very much for your testimony. And um, that concludes all of the testifiers we have on our list. Um, and as long, I don't think I missed anybody else. Is there anybody else who would wish to testify, offer testimony? Okay. Well, um, members, with that, we're going to begin um, some discussion on this as I understand it. And, and I will just say, um, I know that the members of the UFCW who are leaving over for the House um, 
thank you very much for your testimony here today. We really appreciated hearing from you. Thank you. Um, and um, we'll go ahead and open up to some discussion. And I believe um, the Department of Labor and Industry, Deputy General Counsel, Counsel Laura uh, Zajac is here is available if there are any technical questions as well. Um, and I, I guess I'll, I just I'll go ahead and open it up with just some some thoughts on this bill. I, thank you, Senator Putnam, for bringing this bill. I'm really glad that we were able to hear from these testifiers today, and um, it is. Um, it's really sobering to hear this testimony. It echoes some of the testimony that we've heard earlier, and I can't help but um, hear a repeated theme, which is working people feeling like they are being made into um, a sort of machine, that they're being dehumanized in a way by their employer that is treating them as if they are just a cog in a machine and that the employer is trying to make that machine um, work as fast as possible and not taking into account the humanity of the people who are actually doing the work. And um, so it's, it's, we've always known that this type of work is very dangerous. And um, one of the things that we've seen in recent years is the automation in this industry has increased and some might claim or assume that that would make the conditions safer, but in discussions that I have had that has actually resulted at times in um, the conditions being more dangerous because of the speed, because of the, the work that is actually being performed. This is extremely, an extremely dangerous, fraught environment for people to be in, even when things are going at a regular pace. Um, but for them to be going even faster, it's, it's pretty scary stuff. And some of the accidents that we've heard testify to today and that I've heard of um, happening in these plants are very, very concerning. So with that, I will bow out and let um, our, our members have some discussion. Um, oh, actually, before we do that, thank you very much. Um, I was just reminded we do have an author's amendment that is the A9. We now have paper copies, so all of the members should have a copy of the A9 author's amendment. Um, is um, Senator Putnam, would you like to, to speak to the amendment at, or, at all? We'll, we'll go ahead and just move the amendment, but if there's any words that you'd like to offer before we do, please feel free. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, thank you, members, for, for listening to the testimony today. Uh, the amendment that you have before you is a Delete Everything Amendment. Um, we've had conversations with the Department of Labor and Industry and with the Department of Agriculture and with other stakeholders and with uh, just regular folks. And those conversations have given us a, a greater lens into this issue. And the first wave of uh, uh, new thoughts are manifest in this uh, Delete everything amendment that you have before. I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of the more significant uh, components of change. One is um, uh, initially in the definition of meat packing operation, uh, we have removed egg production uh, because uh, it wasn't really appropriate within the context of some of the other industries we were talking about. We've also deleted the entire section about unemployment insurance uh, at the request of deed because it's duplicative and inappropriate in the state of Minnesota. Lastly, one of the uh, uh, other things that we're still kind of working out uh, is the particular kind of meatpacking plant that will be the focus of this legislation. Uh, our goal, obviously, is to remediate the harms that are being caused to these individuals who are doing this work that you just heard about. So we want to focus on those activities uh, in those spaces to make sure that they are less likely to occur. Uh, and for that reason, we have also included a uh, size restriction for where this would apply. Uh, so that uh, meatpacking plants of 50 or fewer employees would not be beholden to some of the restrictions in this bill. Uh, that's incredibly important because of work that we're doing with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and in the Agriculture Committee to build up new industries in meatpacking. Uh, so uh, those are the, uh, Madam Chair, those are the major changes that you'll see reflected in this Lead Everything Amendment. And I ask for your support for it. Thank you, Senator Putnam. Um, 
Members, would someone uh, move the A9 amendment? Um, Senator Marty has moved um, for the passage of the A9 amendment. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the A9 amendment is adopted. And um, with that, members, um, any discussion about uh, the, the bill before us? Yes, yeah, Senator Dornick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Putnam, or Senator Putnam, sorry. Is there any um, testifiers left that could speak if I had a question? I know it was a couple of them that were longtime union members and stewards. Um, so I don't know if Mr. Barnes, is he still here or is he gone? Senator Dornick, Ms. Wong is here and this is her um, sort of field. So I think that she could handle some questions That'd quite be great. possibly. That'd be great. If she wouldn't mind. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Senator Putnam, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Oh, go ahead, Senator Dornick. Senator Putnam, um, so with this, you mentioned about the, the thing that I really uh, was glad to hear about agriculture and what we've done with the, the meat packing and support in that in the last few years. Um, is this bill going to come to the Agriculture Committee? Will that be um, a stop for it? Senator Putnam. Uh, Senator Dornick, thank you for that question. Um, that is unclear. Uh, we haven't quite decided as of yet. Uh, most of the requirements here are um, labor specific, although it does deal with agricultural industries. Um, uh, that's something we're still thinking about. Okay. Senator Dornick. Madam Chair. Um, so to the testifier, uh, I don't know your name, so if you, so I could call you by your name, I'm sorry. Ms. Wong, Rena Wong. Rena Wong, Senator Dornick, it's good Wong. to see you again. We met last year. Okay, great. Sorry. Uh, so my question would be just a little bit of if you could help us uh, kind of the process of new hiring and the process of uh, telling them the um, safety issues and walking through their new job. Just how does that work and um, what kind of time do they uh, get for that when they first come on the job? It is, Ms. Wong. it is different by plant. Uh, when workers are newly hired, they do have a new hire employee orientation. Our walking stewards or chief stewards are a part of that process in the plants that we represent workers. Um, I couldn't speak to the, the other plants, but I do know that for the plants where we do um, represent the workers that there is a process for orientation that includes safety. Senator Dornick. Uh, follow up, Madam Chair? Yes. So can you explain, is it uh, an hour or two hours? I know that uh, when I got hired, they'd usually do a, not in meatpacking, but other um, jobs. Um, there was usually a you know, set time. Is it? There is. A Ms. Wong? There, there, there is no way these new employee orientations are two hours long. That is not the case. Um, thank you, Ms. Wong. Senator Dorn, Nick, do you have a follow up? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, I was just asking how long it was. I wasn't saying it was two hours. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Uh, uh, maybe for some clarification, Senator, are you, you're asking if Ms. Wong knows how long, how, how long the um, orientations are. Uh, Ms. Wong, would you care to speak to that, the it, length? It varies by plant. That is why we believe this act is so important. We want some standards um, and we want them to be enforced. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Um, yes, Senator Pappas. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just trying to understand more about the difference between Senate Fell 61, Senator Kunish's bill on fair labor standards for agricultural and food processing workers, and this bill before us. It seems like this bill is much more extensive and you know, if that can't be done today, I'd be really interested in seeing kind of a comparison and how they, you know, how they work together or how they're different. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pappas. Uh, and if either of you have any um, response, please feel free to respond. But it sounded more of a, of a sort of longer term request to see sort of a side by side comparison. Madam Chair, Senator Pappas, thank you for the question. That's something that we're talking about and thinking through. Uh, thank you for raising that concern, Senator Pappas. Thank you, Senator Putnam. Um, yes, and S Senator Grunhagen, I believe, also had a, had a comment or a question. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think we all agree we want uh, as safe as conditions as possible. And uh, I don't think anybody's against that. Uh, the thing is, is that we have certain, and I guess I would ask the uh, 
person from the Department of Labor to come forward because maybe she could answer some of these more technical questions. And by the way, Senator Putnam, I do appreciate the uh, delete all you came forward and the consideration on a little higher number because obviously we don't want to put the small ones out of business. Um, but, you know, the diaper uh, illustration you gave, okay, obviously that's dehumanizing. I don't know if there's a medical reason or what, they're not here. But, um, you know, we've got OSHA, we've got the Department of Human Rights, we've got uh, Workman's Comp. What, couldn't a, a person forced to wear an adult diaper if it's against their will, the way it sounded, couldn't they file a complaint with the Human Rights Department on that? Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. And uh, Ms. Zajac, if you could introduce yourself for the record and if you could speak to that and if any of our other um, testifiers or presenters have testimony, they can offer that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Members. Laura Zajac, Deputy Chief General Counsel at the Department of Labor and Industry. Um, Senator, I think uh, in that situation that there could be a complaint filed with our Labor Standards Department regarding, it sounds like the issue might be an adequate break time, break and rest time. Um, I'm uncertain whether there'd also be something under the Department of Human Rights there might be, but I can speak to the break and rest time. Yep. Oh. Oh, Senator Putnam. Thank you, uh, Senator McKeown. Thank you, Senator Granhagen, for that, that question. It's a really important one. Sometimes we hear stories and they sound horrifying. Um, and our initial response is to say, I think, and it's a totally reasonable response, to say that's rare or that's uncommon or it's a strange occurrence. Um, uh, but in this circumstance, it's exactly as we just heard. It was someone whose line was going so fast. And this is not a single story. This is a story I've heard from a number of people who work at plants in my district. Uh, they do it because of the speed of the line uh, and uh, the inadequate break time. Uh, it's, it's not, they're not forced to do it. Obviously, that, that would be ridiculous. They're not forced to do it. They do it because of the expectations on their labor and their inability to produce at a level as a machine instead of as a person who's doing a job. Uh, so uh, uh, I think that uh, at my own sort of editorial, which I knew you didn't ask for, it's under your wagon, is that we shouldn't put people in positions where they have to make decisions like that. Uh, and when it comes to our current existing uh, uh, scheme for ensuring workplace safety, the most obvious answer is that it's not working yet because those things are happening. And I totally understand the reservation that we don't want to expand government too much. That totally makes sense to me. Um, but the problem is that what we're doing right now isn't catching these circumstances. It's not catching where the problems are. Um, it, it's also a fair argument to say that there are other industries where these repetitive stress injuries are occurring but not to the extent and the scope and the damage that we're talking about with meatpacking, which is why I think it deserves special attention. But thank you for the question, Senator Grunhagen. And follow up, yeah. Senator Grunhagen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks for that response. And I think we're getting closer all the time, okay? <laughs> um, I guess what I, you know, the statistic I have is that 75% of all meatpacking is by large corporations. And we, we only have 25% of the smaller ones, which you seem to address in your de delete all. But one of the things I observed, and I own my own business too, is that the bigger the company, the more dehumanizing the labor becomes. Because they, they get detached from their employees, and the result, not in all cases, but I'm just saying generally, and the result is they concentrate more on the money and production than they do on what the human toll of that production is. And I guess based on the testimony, it seems like that's the case. On the other hand, I'm a person, you know, I was on the school board for 16 years. <laughs> and uh, I always tried to hear both sides of a story. But one of the things I noticed is we don't have the employer here today. And, you know, I own my own insurance agency. It's a small agency, got a few agents and a couple secretaries. I got workman's comp on them. The last thing I want is claims on workman's comp because your rates go through the roof. So when I hear all these injuries, I'm just thinking as a business, I would try to mitigate that uh, and address some of those. And it sounds like they got a safety council, but it, there's not much interest was the testimony. And she did love her job, she said. Uh, uh, I mean, I just can't understand why they wouldn't address these things because they're going to be punished mm -hmm. uh, either with uh, workman's comp, higher rates, uh, OSHA's 
could come in or the Human Rights Department. So I just, you know, to the degree that we could cooperate with these other agencies rather than another size fits all, and maybe there needs to be some tweaking, I just encourage you to, to uh, research between that. If I understand right, you're going to table the bill. It doesn't need more work. But appreciate uh, your efforts on this, okay? Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Senator Putnam. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Senator Grunhagen, for uh, your sincere and earnest approach towards this issue, because um, I think that's what we need. And you're spot on. That's part of why we're tabling this right now, is to make sure we've got something that works for as many people as we can. But we can't forget, uh, and I'm incredibly grateful for, for Chair McEwen for introducing this metaphor at the beginning of our conversation, is the reality of labor uh, in these circumstances is that if a meatpacking plant is exploiting people, uh, is hurting them, uh, a lot of them think that there's just another immigrant who can work there. Yeah. It's interchangeable parts. That's why the machine metaphor is so powerful. Uh, and what I think, I think we forget, and I sense that you feel this too, is that when you treat people like objects, there are complications and implications to that that go way beyond the workplace way beyond the workplace, that actually have profound implications for our communities. Uh, as you're on the school board and you're, you're dealing with kids who are struggling in class, maybe it's because their parent has horrible working conditions and is being treated like an object, is being exploited, and is being treated as disposable, because that is happening. And it's not happening everywhere. You're 100% right. And that's part of what we're working on, is making sure that we focus on the bad behaviors. Thank you, Senator Putnam. Question. Um, well, we have. I have a little list. Is it is it related? Yeah, okay, sure. go ahead, Senator Grunhardt. Yeah, I guess just thank you for that response, Senator Putnam. And again, we're getting closer all the time. Next thing, we won't be sitting apart here. <laughs> but um, you know, I guess just keep in mind as you're looking at this the balance between if we are over prescriptive. And again, I would like to hear from the employers on some of these concerns. They seem terrible that you know if we if we're over prescriptive you know they can close their doors and go someplace else okay or just go out of business and when that happens everybody loses their job too so there is a teeter-totter effect and i'm all for the safety but we've got to keep that uh in balance with surrounding states especially uh and yet uh, address those concerns so thank you madam chair senator liskey Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, first of all, I want to thank all of the all the uh, the testimonies here today. Uh, I do work in the field of taking care of patients uh, from repetitive motion injuries. So, in fact, it was referenced that one of the testifiers goes to the chiropractor regularly, or did until she had surgery. Uh, so, I definitely have respect for what you're trying to do, um, and I want to make factories safer, meat packing plants safer. I, I do. Um, so I have a couple quick questions. One's more of a where is it type situation as we just got this uh, in front of us. Um, it's been mentioned that maybe you have limited to number of employees. Uh, I can't find that in the bill right now as the amendment. So maybe there's a spot that I'm supposed to be looking and haven't seen it yet um, is, and what, what that number might be. Um, I don't know if you added that or didn't add that in here. Senator Putnam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Liskey. Uh, it's supposed to be in there. Uh, I can tell you that much. If it's not, it will be. And that number was 50. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, I have one more question that uh, pertains to my district a little bit more so than, per se, the uh, specific situation here. Um, reading subdivision 6, line 122 through line 127, um, I, I, it, it defines meatpacking operation. Um, I noticed that it cuts out grocery store, deli, restaurant, um, and other businesses preparing for immediate consumption. Uh, the problem that I have here is that it doesn't talk about local butchers or local meat markets um, and cutting out those individuals uh, because, yes, some of them will fall underneath that 50 employee thing, but some of them don't. Uh, they have a lot of part-time employees that will match or meet or exceed that 50 mark. Uh, so my concern is that these individuals, they don't have that same working condition that we're worried about here. Um, and so is there a way to properly change that? Senator Putnam. Madam Chair, thank you, Senator Liske. That's a great idea. You know, as you may be aware, uh, our good pal, Senator Dornick, had uh, some concerns along those issues and was talking about language that's mentioned direct to consumer. 
perhaps entering in there as well, which uh, is something I'd be amenable to talking about further because I think that's a, that's a good point. Any follow-up, Senator Liskey? I appreciate that, Senator Putnam. Uh, just, just looking forward to working forward on this bill as, as like we said, it's, we understand the problem. We want to help address that problem. Thank you. Members, any further discussion at this point? Senator Dornick. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, the, um, a lot of the testifiers are gone, and I too forgot to mention and, and thank them for coming. I know it's a big deal to come in here and to testify, and uh, I really appreciate their stories. I uh, would have enjoyed to talk to some of them. Just for, well, afterwards, I, I always like to go out and, and to, to do that. So I uh, really appreciate that. And also want to just thank uh, Senator Putman, Putnam for you know, the conversations we've had and the working together uh, to go through this bill. And appreciate you tabling it because it's it, uh, it is an issue, and we understand that and we want to get it right. So thank you for the conversations you've had with me, and and I appreciate. Uh, I know that you had mentioned we're going to have more, so appreciate that. And then as far as the stakeholders involved, it, it'll be uh, I'm disappointed that I'm, or that we're not really have, hearing much of what um, their thoughts are and what's going on. Um, so yeah, we. Appreciate you bringing the bill, and we see there is some issues that we need to uh, address, and so I look forward to working together and um, solving those and, and uh, making those uh, meatpacking places safer for the workers. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Dornick, and uh, Senator Marty. Madam Chair, thanks, and yes, yeah, Senator Putnam, just wanted to say that when you hear the stories, what people are going through and you see the types of injuries that occur and the speed of the line and everything. I, I really appreciate your doing this. And I recognize the difficulties of working out all the details and glad you are pursuing it though because I, I keep thinking this is Minnesota in 2023 has that kind of unsafe conditions. And um, so appreciate the people coming up from all the plants to come here and testify and appreciate your work on it. Thank you, Senator Marty. Um, I just I have I have one last comment. Um, just for um, food for thought, as the bill is being tabled, um, I, you know I know that in various legislation that we've heard around um, worker protection measures and um, benefits, perhaps that workers basic very basic benefits that workers should be receiving, um, we do. F float around this idea of, well, we want to exempt smaller businesses. We want to make sure that the smaller ones don't have to abide by these rules. Um, I know that sometimes these are complex questions, and I, I appreciate that, um, especially when we're talking about what those details look like for compliance. But I just want to put a plug in for every worker deserves these protections. So um, I know, Senator Putnam, that you'll have that um, top of mind as you're working on this bill, and I just wanted to make sure to, to include that thought in the record as we're working on these. And with that, um, Senator Putnam, I'll give you the, the last word before we um, set the bill aside. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you all for a very collegial and problem-focused conversation today. Um, in a lot of sense, I, I think this is what we're actually supposed to do, and we just did it. Uh, so that's kind of nice to see. Um, and I especially appreciate the candor uh, and the sincerity. I know that everyone in this room doesn't want what's happening to people to keep happening. Uh, I know that in my heart. So our goal is to work together to come up with something that works. Now, I, I do want to mention there are a couple common counter arguments in a circumstance like this. Um, one is of the burden on business. Uh, and we did actually have someone from the industry here today. Our first speaker was from AgriGrowth. AgriGrowth represents a ton of large meatpacking plants. And I want to point out what they said. What they said was that they are not categorically opposed to this, that they want to make sure that their employees are safe too. And they want to work with us to make it better. I think that's a really good sign, a really good sign for upcoming conversations. You know, and an, another counter argument to something like this is scope. And Senator Grunhagen and I just talked about that just a couple moments ago. We frequently have a defense mechanism where we say, well, that just happened to one person. We just saw that it doesn't just happen to one person. But even if it does, does that make it tolerable? In Minnesota, in 2023, should someone like our friend Dan get trigger finger from doing a job that he has to do to feed his kids? 
even if it's just one person, that should be a resounding no from everyone in this room. So it's our task to make sure that people are able to go to work, do their job, and feed their kids. That's what we're here for. And I very much appreciate our collective approach to doing this work today. And I also have to thank our co-authors, Senators McEwen, Fateh, and Port, for stepping up and supporting this work, and, for, and all of you for continuing to work on it. So thank you all. Thank you, Senator Putnam, and thank you, members, for this productive discussion. We'll look forward to um, seeing you again, Senator Putnam, when the bill is ready for a vote. Thank you, members. And with that, the Senate Labor Committee is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.